Well, uh, we are back, and we have something really fun. So, last time you saw me, we were playing with the Gecko Tech um, Easy Stick Hot Flexible Build Plate. Uh, I do have more information on that one, but we're not going to talk about that. We're going to go right to this. We're going to talk about Build Tech. So, I'm just going to be straight up front. I didn't like Build Tech. I had Build Tech on my first printer. Um, it worked, um, but you always had to like you know grab the spatula and just just kind of just keep attacking it to get prints off um which was nice like things didn't really warp but things weren't really easy to get off so the flex plate system makes it awesome so it should still hold and you should be able to flex and pop it off um thanks to the guy kevin at build tech who went ahead and gave me all the the details and told me no we do have a mark three plate because initially i just sent him an email like hey we I'd love to see a Mark III plate. Um, and he's like, no, we, we do have one. It's right here. And there was. So I ordered a pack of five because I'm crazy. Because I want to test other materials than just, you know, PEI or, um, you know, I, I want to experiment. I want to be able to see what the best material is. You know, and I keep hearing certain materials are better for other things. Like, you know, nylon is supposed to be really good. Garolite and, um, you know, stuff like that. You know, PEI is great with stuff. So these build plates are bare, um, but let's see here, we've got, we've got a squeegee. That's cool. You know, help you get all the air bubbles out. we got air bubbles, so if you use these, gone. Oh, well that went over so well. Gone, gone, gone. Oop. Sample. Can't lose that. Um, yeah, so here's this. Here's a sample of their new PEI sheet that's coming out, uh, slightly textured. So we're gonna take a look at that. Um, yeah, that is, thank you again, Kevin, for the gloss fine matte sample for that. Let's see what else we got in the box here. Oh, we got confetti made of foam. Man, I'm gonna throw a party and just, you know, wah, that was cool. So that was fun. <laughs> we, got a, we got some build tech. So we'll, we'll throw this on a surface immediately, and oh, I love that, fix, that finish though, love a matte finish. But in here, and again, really well packaged again, we have a whole bunch of sheets of Biltec Flex Plate. So let's get that here. Uh, let's, let's open this up, let's see what we got. Uh, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Enough of that. So these are well packaged again. Um, I don't think it's going to get damaged in shipping at all. But it is metal. Oh, look at that. They're so well packaged. Look at that little extra foam. Pull this out. Oh, that's pretty. That is pretty. And it's it's got an etching. It's actually laser etched. Biltech flex plate. One side is the caution symbol. See, I'll use that as takeoff. Let's see if this is going to... Oh, oh wow, that comes, whew, that feels good, that feels great right there, come on, a little bit more, yep, there it is, come on, oh, that felt great, <laughs> so, nice flex plate, it is chrome coated, that's the big fancy feature on these, so, um, these are coated against rust, because again, the, the regular sheet metal, the, the spring steel, can rust. Um, and the this Biltac plate is awesome. So it's got the laser etching. It's got a line back here to tell you, hey, you know, line up your material here. Even says right here, again, laser etched right here. You can see that. It says align the 9x10 Biltac sheet to this edge. So every it's the instructions are literally on the plate. That is so cool. I almost don't want to cover this side. I almost want to just put some on this side and then put... PEI on this side, you know, just get like a 9 by 10 PEI and just <laughs> stick it right there. Um, so, you know, let's do that. Let's go ahead and put this together. We're going to move all these. Uh, let's compare it with the Mark III sheet. We're not going to throw these. No throwing our fancy sheets. And the sheets are 25, 26 bucks um, done. And they have a notch in the back, as you can see, which should line up. And it does. It lines up remarkably with the holes on the back of the 
there are the notches on the Mark III plate. And again, it is it is a perfect fit. Uh, it's a little bit bigger, uh, which is fine. They measured it to the bed, so it should be a better fit. But that is that is really nice. That looks really good. So let's get this out of here. Don't want to throw this one. <laughs> All my throwing fun is gone. And let's pull a piece of build tack off here, or we'll put a piece of build tack on. So we've got some beautiful build tack here. There's quite a few sheets of build tack in here. We've got four sheets of build tack. We've got a little little installations of wipe down the bare surface, make sure it's clean, trim the build tack sheet to match the size of your build plate, if not already. Um, remove the white adhesive. So, yep, so there's your adhesive backing. So we're gonna do, I got some isopropyl alcohol. We'll wipe our fancy bed down. We will slap on a sheet of build tack. See how well that fits in there with that line. Come on, Kevin, let's see if those line work. Let's see if those line work. Let's see if those lines work. Oh, well, they do. It lines up right to the line. That's gonna look cool. And that little metal flare at the end there. Um, so yeah, let's clean this. Pop this off. Let's open up my squeegee. Let's immediately install some build tech. This is a really nice squeegee, by the way. This is thick, hard plastic. Um, I think the only way this could be cooler is if they 3D printed these squeegees. I know that's not cost effective, but that would be cool. Like, hey, 3D printing for everything. Um, and I think my plan of action is to line it up with the edge. And then squeegee it down this way uh, I might go it would be easier for me with the way that it might be easier for me with the camera there's literally a tripod right in this area it might be easier for me to do something like this so yeah let's give it a try if I fail you know what you I, I fail with all of you so it would be well worth messing this up for everyone on TV land and YouTube so we're going to crack open my 99% isopropyl alcohol by Swan. Amazon, two-pack for, like, cheap. Um, and again, if you're using PEI, you're definitely going to want some 99%, and also you clean up your build tack with isopropyl. So we'll just do a few dabs on my shop rag here. And let's clean this down. Let's get, my, let's get all these nasty fingerprints I put down off on here. And actually, you know what? I'm going to keep putting fingerprints on here. So, it might be time to glove up, but we'll find out here in a second. I'm just going to put this down, get all the greasy fingerprints off, and they are coming right off. And then just, oh yeah, there we go. Polish that bad boy up. Get a nice dry patch here. There might have been some residue on my... I used to clean up the Gecko Tech earlier, so... This towel might have some stuff on it, but it should be good. It's better than it was. It was actually very clean. It wasn't a bunch of fingerprints. Let me see. Do I have my gloves? Do I have gloves? Oh, I do. Oh, man. We're going to glove up for this. I don't want to keep putting fingerprints down. So we're going to whip out some of my favorite stuff. Some of these XL, you know, for big hands. To say about big hands, you get to buy big, powder-free, textured, nitrile examination gloves. Which, these are great because they're contaminant-free. If you're allergic to latex, you don't have to worry about that. Um, good texture. I use these in the shop all the time for shop things. And they fit my big dorky hands. So. Ooh. Ooh. All right. Let's give one more quick cleaning. This time I won't be spreading fingerprints back on. I can actually hold it on the plate. Drop my cap for my isopropyl alcohol on the ground. That's okay. That's better. Now they get a nice hold on there. 
So let's just keep putting this down here. Nice and easy. Boom. There we go. That has not a single bubbly air bubble. That looks really nice. That surface, nice matte texture. Um, yeah. Look at that little, little golden build tech logo. Because, you know, quality comes with gold. Uh, and we did line that up really well. I think I missed, you can see a little bit of shininess here on the edge. I went just a little bit off. I think actually it's just a little there. And then we just got to come in and trim these corners. So I'm going to, do I really want to put one on this side? What do you think, guys? Should I put one on this side? Um, I don't know. I almost want to make one side build tech, one side something else. I think I'm going to go without applying anything on here because I can always clean this back up. And uh, after cleaning it back up, I can put a different material on here. So, boom. We have... Ah! Oh, we have ourselves a finely done piece of build tech. Application was easy, as long as you follow the old cell phone rule um, of applying fancy stuff. Flex is really nice. The bed is perfectly flat. The Gecko Tech had a little bit of warp. This is this is flat. This is extremely flat. Um, wow. So good job, Build Tech. This looks great. Now we're gonna run a bunch of test prints. I'm gonna throw on the same, um, as you can see, I have a bunch of these bad boys. We're gonna print a bunch of those on here. Uh, I'm going to start, I have PLA already loaded in, so I'm not going to switch that. Last time I told you an order and I went a completely different order, and that's because I already had PTG put in. So we're going to start with um, printing with the, the PLA that's already in there. i got some push plastics, black uh, PLA for the master spool. Oh, look at that. I should have left the gloves on. I'm already putting fingerprints on it. Um, I'm printing the center anyway, so I'm not really worried about it. I will clean this off with some isopropyl alcohol again just to make sure it's good to go. I'm gonna set my Live Z properly, print my first print, and uh, come back to you with some popping off of the bed sheet action. So stay tuned for that. Um, see you in a little bit. Well, welcome back. We got our first print, beautiful inky, no warping on the build tack. Flex plate system. Um, it did great. It magnetized right down, lined up perfectly with the uh, notches. Um, I did round off the corners with a little X-Acto knife because, you know, they were a little sharp. I didn't want to pokey myself. So let's give it a test. Let's see if it pops off. You ready? You ready? Oh, that's a good sound. Let's keep going. Oh, all good sounds. Oh, See that bottom. Ooh, look at that matte finish. And no damage. There's no damage. All right, so far, PLA test did great. Um, first layer looks awesome. Print looks awesome. So yeah, we are uh, we're one for one. Come back. Uh, we're gonna try some PETG next. So let's see what we can do with some fancier materials. All right, see you in a little bit. Oh, so the PETG print just finished, just came off the printer. Um, I set it down, let it cool completely. Build tech is now room temp. Um, there is no warping. It looks glorious. It did a really good job. This was my second attempt though, the first attempt uh, it, it unstuck, um, and it was my timidus. It really went down to being so timid from ruining the last build surface I tested, uh, that I played with the Live Z a little high, um, I talked to some people, and they're like, no, with the build tech, PTG, you need to play it like it's PLA. So, I put that layer down, made sure it was nice and thick, it's stuck, no warping, um, it is on there, um, we're going to find out if it comes off. So let's find out 
if it will pop off. And it does. Look at that. There's a beautiful sound to hear after printing PETG on. Oh, oh, fully came off. So after play, using PETG on uh, PEI, it's you know nice to have a surface that it doesn't just bond to if you get too close. So you know PEI, you try to you know bring that live Z back up a little bit on your Mark Threes and Mark Twos, just so you don't adhere it way too well. And if you do, you will end up with a fused print to your surface. You'll come in there with a crazy knife, and you're going to try to cut it off and end up stabbing yourself with the hand tool jobby. Um, but no, this came right off. Um, and then look at that surface. That is, is beautiful. It is matte finished. It's got a nice little luster to it. Um, print looks awesome. Uh, really happy with that because, uh, you know, PETG is not the easiest thing to work with. Um, it, left, it looks like it left a little mark where it printed, but it's not damaged. I bet you they'll clean off with a little bit of, um, no, let's put all these fingerprints on here. But yeah, I am not worried about that. That came off great. That surface is way better. Let's see if I got my other. Yeah, so this is from printing the PETG on the Gecko Tech. This is printing on the Build Tech. So, two competing surfaces, specifically made for 3D printing. Um, love the shininess, but we did rip you know, the material off. And I did get an email back and a message from the guys from Gecko Tech. So, they've got some input for me. Um, and we'll get to that just in another conversation. But for now, this Build Tech was awesome. These build plates are awesome. The um, best things about these things, again, biggest things is these are chrome-coated um, spring steel. They say it's spring steel, they say it's coated with um, coated with chrome, that way it doesn't uh, rust, because spring steel, you know, it's a higher carbon steel, it's higher carbon steel, it's gonna, it's gonna rust over time. This isn't gonna rust as easily. I mean, you can still scratch this eventually and stuff, and I've been touching this all day, so it's a little, you know, finger, finger, fingerprint grease and all that stuff's going to etch into your metals. So uh, it's nice to know that it's chromed. I'm going to clean this off. I'm going to put a piece of PEI on this side. Uh, you might hear some noise. That's the Mark II S back there. Uh, Orlando sold me a uh, cloned MK52, the magnetic bed for the Mark III, and I slapped it on the Mark II S here a little bit ago, and I threw on another build tech sheet. I'm printing a giant... Um, uh, waving octopus man in gold over there with the gold uh, push plastic PLA. But yeah, I am, I am, call me impressed. This is a really nice surface. It adhered great. Um, and you just can't treat it like PEI when you're printing PETG. I mean, um, normally I'm used to pulling those layers back a bit and, you know, <laughs> making sure I don't, you know, get too close and end up with a permanent print stuck to my PEI. Um, I mean, durability wise I think it'll last a long time. I haven't done any measurements to see how thick the material is, but you know it's it, it's gonna be good. I think it's gonna be great. I love you know, I'm glad I bought a five pack of these things so that way I can throw on some different surfaces and test more surfaces and see what works and hey the, the scoop is Biltac is launching in a couple weeks or less. Oh that fan sounds horrible. <laughs> um, that's the Mark IIs that's being rebuilt, so I haven't swapped out the part fan yet. That's loud and gross. But yeah, it, they're releasing a PEI, and I've got a little sample of it somewhere. I put it somewhere, um, and it is it is a, a luster satin finish, so it should give a nice luster satin finish. You know, kind of, kind of like my sanded side, where I sanded off all the PE, you know, the PETG that had bonded to this uh, side of the PEI. So yeah. Looks like I've got some alternatives. This is a really nice alternative. I I really enjoy this, and I'm glad um, glad I got to test it. Thanks again, Kevin, for making sure I knew what to get from your site over here at Build Tech. Because if I if you didn't tell me you had these things with the notches, I would have just you know been like, hey, keep making stuff, but make it for the Mark III because we really need you here. So yeah, um, that's my final thoughts. It's an awesome material. Boat Chris thinks it's fantastic. Um, Reptar is excited to be reprinted, so he's not as, as poorly done as he was before. So he'll stick a lot better onto the material. 
So, yeah. Um, keep on printing. If you have any questions, um, you know, I'll be happy to answer them. And of course, stay tuned because I'm going to do a throwdown. Um, build tech versus gecko tech versus PEI versus whatever else I can find uh, and print some things, some difficult things and see which one's better. I'm, I got my print dryer coming so that way I can get that nylon set up and I can run nylon and see which one these because build tech does say they will work with nylon and flex material. You just need to throw a little bit of glue down um, and I'm, I'm fine with that if, if it's going to work. So I have some magic goo. I'll throw that on a build tech. I will test it out, but I mean, obviously it works. I mean, I have fabulous, where's my, there it is. I got fabulous matte surface bottoms. I'm still getting used to it. I mean, again, I pulled back a little bit on the PLA here. Finally got a good layer squished down. There's still no elephant foot, but it's a good first layer. Um, so you can see the Push Plastics PLA black and the Esun PETG black. Um, they printed great. I mean, Thank you, BuildTech, for making a surface, surface that works and I don't have to be afraid of. Um, yeah, so again, thanks, and uh, keep on printing, guys.